I mean, yeah, that's... <laughs> you, I never understand how I get the opportunity to direct any film, but I think that the... Uh, I was working with Brad Fisher on another movie called The Long Walk, which didn't go, and he had this script, and he had this deal with Amblin about making it, and they were looking for a director, and they just... He just suddenly... We just started talking about it, and it was just a, uh, a wonderful opportunity to just get into a classical movie like about Dracula. I mean, uh, uh, so I completely fell in love with this project immediately. It was like, how can you, how could I, you know, to even just get the, to be in, in conversation about it was, was thrilling. I mean, he, he is the ultimate villain in, in, in fiction and he's pure evil, but he's also driven by a very basic need that we all have. I mean, obviously, in his particular case, it's about blood, but it can be related. You, it can be, you know, compared to many other things. And I, um, and I found that to be a, such a fascinating aspect to a person who is actually sophisticated and an aristocrat on one side, and then can just turn into this monster uh, and literal. And this is what we aimed at, making him literally a monster. Um, in, uh, you know, when, when the when the needs to be that comes up. So, uh, yeah, I find him to be one of, you know, one of the most complex and intriguing characters in, in the world, you know, in, in fiction. Well, that's wonderful. <laughs> that, that's, if, you, if, you, if that's what you see, then that's great. That's a relief because that's what we, that is what we were trying to do. It's, it is uh, trying to make, uh, make, this, uh, make Dracula as scary as possible because a lot of the Dracula movies that have been in the past have been gothic or they have a sense of romance or they've had all these aspects to them but to just make Dracula into just pure horror hasn't really been done much before um, and at least not for decades and I just we just I just wanted to embrace that opportunity to create a pure raw horror movie with Dracula at its center yeah no I mean all credit to Braga Schott for creating that script, who, who wrote the original draft, because he saw that. He saw that this is just such a contained, wonderful story all on its own. And yes, you have the blueprints for the story in the captain's log in the novel, but there is, you don't know what, exactly what you're saying. You don't know what actually happened between those log entries. So that is a huge, vast, wonderful opportunity to create a story about the human beings who are just mentioned as names in the in the novel and and tell their how they are in peril because they're that's what's so wonderful is that you see Dracula from a point of view of just a regular human being not from the point of view of an Helsing or somebody who is close to Dracula to them he's just this distant monster that just came into their world to destroy it yeah and that's you know that's such a that's such an aspect of um, of a horror the, the horror genre that you can create all this tension in a very short, a very small environment. But in this case, what I loved about it, co um, compared to other movies I've done, is that the small space is actually huge. You're out in the ocean, out in the middle of the, uh, of the Mediterranean Sea. So it is, um, or for the most part, and it's, um, uh, it's, it's vast and it's contained at the same time. And I think that's visually very intriguing. I mean, um, having been around Guillermo del Toro, his mind has, of course, influenced me. Obviously, his movies do, but also to be the, the way you, he sees how to use light and sets and, and camera angles, and you, you can study his uh, films. But also, you know, Spielberg's movies are always such... Uh, have, even in the most suspenseful moments, they have such warmth. And I think uh, the humanity always comes through, regardless of the spectacle. And I think that's been an influence, but I think also uh, David Fincher with his stark, cold, um, very clean visual style is also very influenced, has influenced my film, horror filmmaking, because I love the, the classical story, the classical use of camera, the classical use of, um, of light and, uh, you know, uh, the whole nine yards. I mean, the captain is, um, obviously he has a responsibility. That, that's, he, how does he handle his responsibility facing something he doesn't know anything about? It, it does he, is he able to remain the captain of the ship? Is he able to steer the crew as a group to fight the enemy? 
um, because he's not really a soldier. He's a captain of a, you know, of a boat. And so that became a very big aspect to his character, in my opinion, that it was uh, about his abilities to handle his crew in the situation up against this. And Liam brings gravitas. He brings nuance. He brings a performance level that just elevates everything he's in. So, and also as an actor on set, he's so warm and he's so including and he's so helpful. And, you know, it's... Uh, being around these amazing actors is just a joy. Yeah, he's brilliant. I mean, he's such a thoughtful actor and he, he digs really deep and comes up with uh, great ideas for how to nuance moments and how to portray these things. And, and um, he, I mean, he's such a, um, uh, a great performer with he can deliver a performance in one take and then he can work it a little bit differently in the next take and he takes direction so well and he's he's also very strong as an actor he knows what he wants and it's just um, so he brought but he also brings a warmth and a humanity and a vulnerability in the beginning of the film that can be used as a strength later in the film so he's just one of those amazing actors yeah yeah yeah, I mean, he wins everyone over with, because he's also facing something that is entirely unimaginable to a scientific mind, a doctor, that he's learned that everything is grounded. And, uh, and then faced, faced with this devil, he has to actually come to terms with that the world is not what he uh, expected it to be. And that's kind of the big theme in the movie in many ways. And that comes through his character. And that's something I love about the script is that that, you know, the theme of the film comes through the discovery of the character. Yeah, he's such a great actor. He's such a joy to work with. He's so profoundly present in the character. He's, um, he loves, uh, he lo you know, God, he loves the genre like very few others. He's obsessed with, uh, and he, he was obsessed with Dracula. I mean, he, he loves the character from before we even got to, uh, get to, got to meet, uh, talk about it. And, uh, and he spent actually a while on a ship, uh, a, a year or something of his life, if not more. So he really knew how to handle himself on the ship as well. So that, that, those kind of things come out very well in, uh, on screen. But he has an intensity about him that I love, and he has a, a, a screen presence that is just uh, almost underused, in my opinion. I mean, we, uh, Edward Thomas, who is the production designer, he, and he and I talked about the basic layout in the beginning because we needed the story to work logically according to the way the script was written, and we needed to start placing the rooms in accordance to how it needs to be to for function in the story. And then, you know, it was always the idea that the cargo hold was this big belly of the beast, and that's where, you know, we, it's all gonna, that's what it's all going to be about. And... Um, and uh, it had to be a schooner because that's the way it's described in the novel. So then you have some parameters for what kind of ship you're doing. But I wanted it to be huge, I mean, like, like a big schooner with three masts. And because we needed all the space for the actors to be able to play and for, for me to be able to create tension, spatial tension, and create unreliable environments that the actors could, could be scared in, basically. Uh, so, yeah. Uh. It was great. I mean, we, uh, we had amazing crews, amazing uh, uh, set designers and cr people in every department. Uh, I cannot, you know, um, say things, uh, uh, say high enough, good enough things about the German crew cr uh, creating the ship, both interior. And then we went to Malta and we, we built the whole exterior of the ship with, you know, with real wood. And, uh, <laughs> and it was just this, it was practically, you know, a real ship. Um, and it was just, uh, and in a way, you know, for any normal sized movie, it was an, an enormous endeavor um, to do that. Most of these seafaring movies cost much more than ours, you know. Yeah, and I, I always wanted the evolution. I wanted to follow the story of Dracula, but not show him. That's a really tricky prospect because you, you can't show what you need to t tell. <laughs> so, um, but we, we uh, in the end, he is a very old man who is in us uh, over 400 years old. And I really wanted to see that on him. I wanted to feel his age. I didn't want him to be sexy or, you know, a, a suave 
kind of version of Dracula at all. I want him to be somebody who's lived with this in this horrific uh, lifestyle that obviously he does. Um, and, uh, and he's frail. He's really desperate for blood. When he loses his blood supply, um, he needs to just... Uh, he's in a desperate situation until he's able to kill the first crew member. And I wanted to try to tell that story and how he then, as he gains power, he, he's then able to again uh, gain the power to create, recreate a demon within him, have, have it manifest. And that demon needed to be part bat, part demon, because the bat part of a vampire is really intriguing. And I wanted to make sure, and with the producer, uh, Brad Fisher, he also was a big part of this, creating this with the designers and everybody, um, where everything had to be biological, uh, like the, the way the, the arms are and the way you f the flip, uh, the arm would turn into a, a whole extended um, wing and how the ice would work and how, how he flies and moves and lands and all that stuff. You know, we were studying bats and bats and bats. So, yeah, yeah it's incredible. I mean, I, I, he's absolutely amazing and he's such a, a, sport, a trooper on set. He knows what it takes to do these kind of difficult parts. And it's so hard on him. And if you see the behind the scenes stuff or something, you know, you see how, how what a uh, ter terrible situation he's constantly in physically to be able to do this. Um, and he, but he's so agile, he's so friendly, he's so, even in the most, uh, you know, in the middle of the night when it's all, you know, we've been there for hours and hours, and he was there four hours before us because he was in a makeup chair getting ready. He's still, you know, uh, there's still a smile on his face. He's still able to, to work with the character and the needs of the scene. I mean, I think that um, this is like Alien. It's just that it's on a ship in 1897 and the creature is Dracula and it's scary. It, it, that's, you know, it, we've been try I've been trying to make the scariest portrayal of Dracula in ages. That's been my goal. And uh, I just hope that the audience embraces that. Yeah.